Well, today we're back to the old Thunderbird. Uh, I'm going to remove both wheels. Uh, jack the car up, remove both wheels, put them on jack stands, prop them up with some wood and a bunch of other stuff in case the, uh, the jack stands were to fail. I don't trust any of these old cars. They're so heavy. I don't trust any car, actually, when I get underneath it. I make sure I have double coverage at a minimum in case something were to happen. The jack's going to be holding it up. The jack stands will hold it up. And piled wood with a tire laying flat on top of it will be holding it up. So <laughs> I just, you know, I've lived this long by being careful, not by being stupid, okay? Anyway, besides, I don't want my name listed on the Darwin Awards on the Internet. Ugh, well, that would not be cool. So what we're going to do is take a shock off. Now, there's a shock on each side, and the top of the shock is a little bit different than what you find on most cars. Uh, this shock, the top goes through a square plate. That plate is bolted by four bolts, one in each corner, to a bracket that goes all the way across the car. Or at least I think it does. It's hard to see up in there. But there is a bracket. So it's not a matter of just taking the top of the shock loose and then dropping it down through that plate. No, you have to take all four bolts of that plate out, and the plate actually comes down with, you know, on the shock. It comes down with the shock. So you have to, uh, once you get it down, then you, why is this thing? Come on, stay focused now. Okay, once you get it all down, then you have to transfer that plate to the new shock in order to put it all back up in there. So... Let's go ahead and jack it up and get everything secure. I haven't got any shocks for it. I, that's not the idea today uh, to change the shocks. I, I just want to get them out of there because they look horrible for one thing. But the way the uh, shop manual describes removal of the gas tank is you have to take loose the top of the shock, I guess, to make clearance. Well, if I'm going to take loose the top and the shocks look so bad that they, I mean, they really rusted to pieces, why not just take the entire shock out? So that's what I'm going to do. Well, let me get started. All right, guys, here's what I'm talking about by triple coverage. I have the tire and some wood up underneath the spring and some thicker wood in the rear. I have a jack stand back there up against the axle. And I have my jack right here. Now what I'm going to do is lower the jack down a little bit so it's tight against that jack stand over there. Then we'll get the drop light and take a look up in there and see what we have to contend with to get that shock out. All right, let's go in over the top of the wheel hub up there where the muffler's at. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Where's the shock? There's the shock right there. Let's follow it up, follow it up. All right, there's our plate. There's two of the bolts that hold the plate on. That's the top of the shock up in there. Man, oh man, oh man. Let me get in there a little. All right, that's a little better. Oh, we got another mud wasp mess. <laughs> you know, this guy that owned this car previously, he had a uh, stock pond just off from his house, you know, maybe 100, 150 feet or so. I don't know, not very far. And it was just an invitation to those mud wasps. The car was next to it. There's a great protection for their little mud wasp nests. All right, we're gonna have to take out that bolt, that bolt, and these two over here. There's one there. Anyway, take my word for it. There's one there and one behind this uh, thing here. Anyway, Shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, those two over there should be fairly easy. They're not a lot of rust, a lot of just compound or, uh, you know, uh, undercoating on it. Whereas over here, uh, over the years, the water has washed it all away. But I don't know. I'm going to soak it real good with uh, some of that liquid wrench and see what happens. I'll wire brush it, soak it with liquid wrench. Let's take a look at the gas tank. Now the gas tank. Uh, there's our line coming into the gas tank. Going out to the uh, <coughs> going out to the fuel pump and there's the electrical wire. That's kind of an interesting setup. Let me check that electrical wire. Is that just a rubber cap or will that thing unplug? Well how about that? Hoo hoo hoo! She just unplugged. All I've got to do is disconnect this right here. 
disconnect the filler tube and there might be one other one somewhere I don't know I have to check on the other side but this is getting easier by the minute so this is the tank right here held in by this strap I'll give you a far away shot here in a second and they claim that you have to take this the top of this shock part more mud wasp mess up in here. Ugh, let me shake it off the camera anyway they claim you got to take that top of that shock out in order to get the tank out I don't know why there's plenty of clearance my god there must be a must be a foot of clearance here between that shock let me show you here back out a little bit between that shock and that tank look at all that clearance in there I don't know I don't get it we shall see in order to take the tank out by the way I've got to loosen those nuts all the way down and take those hooks out that loosens the strap up so I can take it loose from underneath well, I'll tell you what, while I'm under here, under here fiddle farting around with this shock, I think I'll go ahead and disconnect that gas line over there. Well, I need a pair of pliers to, you know, squeeze that clamp together and slide it up and then take that rubber hose off. I might even go ahead and squirt this down with some uh, liquid wrench and maybe even remove it. Maybe we can do all this uh, prep work or at least get it loose, get it loose. I don't want to try to take it out or anything until I get that filler tube and that... Uh, filler tube uh, loose I'll show you that in a second now in order to remove the filler tube there's four there's a plate behind that cap behind the neck of the uh, filler tube it has uh, four hex head screws that need to come out and then we need to take these screws out right here and because this goes straight into the gas tank and there's an o-ring in there good size o-ring that goes around it's a pretty thick o-ring to keep it sealed probably been in there since the tank was put in the car and you can bet that baby is stuck so and there's normally a uh, plastic or fiberglass cover I'd like to come up with one of those somewhere that fits over the top of the filler tube here and, and it bolts to the to the trunk here there's one of the holes right there right there and there's another one up there it bolts in and covers and protects this thing unfortunately it's missing I think everything is missing from this car <laughs> but you know considering the price and the condition it was in for the price guess I have nothing to complain about so we're gonna have to get that filler tube cracked loose after I take the screws out from the inside of this box we're gonna have to crack that pipe loose from that gas tank and then slide that baby out that's why we have to get this uh, ring the screws in that ring out of there now this is a strap wrench that I have uh, had for many years, okay, I, I've used it for all sorts of things. I had a whole set at one time, a, a small strap wrench, a, a, a medium size, and then this big one. And I used the big one quite a bit, but not as much as the medium and the small. Anyway, whatever happened to the medium and the small, I have no idea. Like I said, when the grandkids get in your toolbox, <laughs> everything disappears. Well, I guess I ought to show you how you adjust the size first. This piece of rubber here fits in that slot. And then you just pull the rubber down until you get it to the size you need. Just keep pulling it and pulling it. Now, it comes out easy. It's not held in by anything. I've had to have actually tape around it, around them to hold them in place. Now, some of the cheaper ones, the Craftsman's not so bad, but just pull the rubber down. Just pull it down with your hand. and It gets smaller and smaller until you get to the size you need. And that's the way we're going to do it. We get to the size we need, and then we just grab a hold of the handle. Your hand, the grip of your hand will hold the rubber strap in the slot on the other side. And then we're just going to go ahead and pull it down like that. And, and the, the more you pull it down, the tighter it gets, and it'll crack that a little bit. Then you move it a little bit further on down, crack it a little bit there, and you move it all the way back and crack it up here at, the front, at this end. You keep working it back and forth. Now, if you reverse this thing around, It'll, it'll, go, it'll go the other way, cause this pipe to go that way. The way it is right now, it's down. Now, I may have to wind up switching it around and pushing it up to get it go back this way, and then back, maybe back this way. I don't want to damage this pipe. I want to take it easy, take it easy. I can't, you can't use the old ring, the old O-ring over. If you do, you're asking for trouble. If you ever take a, a filler tube out of a gas tank, unless you have no other choice, buy a new o-ring for it before you put it back in because it will it, it won't it won't seal unless you gook it up with some kind of crap i don't know what you would put in there silicone or even then it wouldn't last very long 
always use a new seal. You want a nice tight fit. You don't need gas pouring out underneath your car, getting on your mufflers. You understand what I'm trying to say here with kids in the back seat of the car? Okay. Uh, let's see what I can, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to clean those bolts, all those rusty bolts around that plate with a, a wire brush and then just give it a good spray with uh, liquid wrench and then I'm going in the house for a cup of coffee. All right, coffee break is over, and those bolts have had quite a bit of time to soak. Sometimes they require days, you know. Some people think you can just spray a bolt, and 10 minutes later it's going to be loose. That's not necessarily the case. Now, this bottom bolt down here that holds the bottom of the shock, I went ahead and sprayed that too before I went in for uh, my coffee. I think what I'm going to do is take that bolt off first. Uh, if you take the top loose and then you try to take the bottom loose, uh, the top is up there flopping around back and forth and it can cause all kinds of problems. So let's see if I can't get that thing at least, at least get it broken loose. Well, we got the big old nut off. Takes a three quarter inch. And all the bolts that hold the plate on are nine sixteenths. Three of them came out with no problem at all. The fourth one is... Uh, <laughs> Of course, the muffler uh, tailpipe has to be in the way, but that's okay. You know, I mean, I can't get a ratchet up in there. However, at times like this is when it pays to have a good set of ratchet wrenches right here. If you don't have, if you don't have a good set of ratchet wrenches, get you some. They're great. All right, you can see that all four bolts have been removed. That one up there on the other side of that tailpipe was a kind of a booger, but that old ratchet wrench got it right out. Now, um, all I have to do, supposedly, is take the bottom of the shock off, and this whole mess is supposed to come right down out of the car. Well, I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? All right, we're about ready to do it, too. We're going to take, after you take the nut off, you got this washer. They usually come with the shocks. You'll get some new ones. Sometimes not. I don't know what they do nowadays. I haven't bought a set in quite a while. Now I'm going to take this old hammer. And I'm just going to tap that shock right off of there. And then maybe we can uh, wiggle it on down. Uh, she's coming. All right, she's loose. Now let's see if I can get underneath there and wiggle it down. Well, there she is, guys. That's the whole plate. Fits up in the hole up in that cross bracket on the car. My job now is to get this nut off and I'll have to put a uh, pair of ice grips right there on the end where it's flat or a small wrench or something, it all depends. Looks like they've used vice grips in the past. Just tighten it on down. You don't want to tighten these rubber things down so tight that they bulge way out. You see, this guy put these shocks in right. They're nice and even with the outside edge of the, uh, well, for all I know, these are original shocks. <laughs> Anyway, that's what we're going to do to the other side now. So now you know how to take the shocks, the rear shocks, out of a 1966 Thunderbird. I decided before going to the other side, what the heck, let's just go ahead and take that fuel line off that tank while we're here. Use as much of the time as we can productively. Well, she's up, nothing to it, nothing to it. But, you know, this is going to have to be replaced because it's hard as a rock. Yeah, you don't want that too hard. I also went ahead and uh, taped off the uh, nozzle coming out of the tank. I put some uh, duct tape over the top because there was a, a small uh, gas fume. I could smell it. I also went ahead and sprayed the bolt that holds the tank strap on. And when it comes time to take that baby off, it should be nice and loose. Now we can go to the other side of the car. And basically the same thing what you just saw. Next time we'll go ahead and drop the entire tank. I hope we'll have it all ready to go. i got to get the car up on the jack stand on the other side and you know, all that sort of rot. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. Until next time, this is John. Well, there we go, guys. Match set. Both not worth a crap. So we're going to go ahead and fix them up. Uh, one more thing before I actually close out. I went inside a few minutes ago, cooled down, checked some of my uh, YouTube subscriptions to see if who had uploaded what lately because i kind of been behind with all the work I've been doing. 
and I found out that yesterday, of course everybody else already knew this, I'm a little bit behind, but yesterday, I'm a junk collector, had a birthday. Well, even though it's a day late, here we go, Don, are you ready for this? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Don. Happy birthday to you.